everyone. I'm uh, Hugo Swart and I lead our XR and uh, the broader metaverse uh, initiative uh, here at Qualcomm. Uh, we're doing quite a bit of work uh, in the space in both uh, you know, VR, AR and, um, and the metaverse. So we thought it would be nice to explore more, to share more um, with our audiences, you know, Snapdragon insiders and folks working in the industry a little bit under the hood of uh, what we do and our vision. So that's why we are coming uh, with this new show, Exploring the Metaverse, and I'm um, happy to have uh, you follow us. The first guest uh, of our Exploring the Metaverse show is uh, Brian. Brian has been uh, uh, with me almost from the beginning of the journey, so we thought it would be a good person to help uh, the audience understand more about the Metaverse and uh, Qualcomm's uh, role in it. So welcome, uh, Brian. Thanks for joining us. Thanks for having me. It's great. So why don't you start by introducing yourself? When did you join the team and what you do? What do you excites you about uh, XR and the metaverse? So I've been on the team for about five years. Got started back in 2017 in uh, the really early days of standalone VR. So obviously um, back then, lots of people were doing VR on PCs. And, uh, and so Qualcomm helped cut the cord and enable you know, virtual reality on, on standalone devices. And so I think one of the consistent themes I've been involved with since I joined five years ago was about around building ecosystem and working with the content players. So how do we, how do we help uh, create rich experiences for these immersive devices, whether it be VR or AR? Yeah. And then uh, how do we work with the partners in the ecosystem to help them create and access this amazing technology that Qualcomm creates. You know, let's focus a little bit more in XR, right? Virtual reality, aug augmented reality. You know, our, our strategy for XR, which uh, really consists of uh, four key pillars, right? First is building um, the best chips for the market, right? With the, the right performance, power, size, integration. So that's the first. The second is having the right technology Right, be it connectivity, perception technology, um, things like tracking. Um, and, uh, and then the third one, which is our reference designs. We take our chips, our technology, and build reference designs. I have one of them here. And then the fourth one, which is, you know, how do we expand and scale in the ecosystem? You know, how do you define the metaverse? How do you see, you know, the metaverse shaping from where we are today to you know, maybe in 10 years, what we will um, see as the next generation embodied internet, if you will. Yeah, yeah. It can also be about creating the virtual real world. So how do we take the real world and overlay content on top of it? And that's really augmented reality. Right. So what gets me really excited is um, is not just the role that virtual worlds are gonna play, where whether that's on a PC, um, in, in gaming, or whether it's uh, in commerce, or whether it's you know in a virtual reality headset, but how do we actually compute on the real world? And how is the real world and the overlay of the metaverse on top of it gonna impact our lives in the future? That's one of the things that really gets, it gets me excited and it's a lot of time we spend here thinking about the future of that. Our CEO and our broader Qualcomm strategy evolves on this one common technology roadmap, right? That we can apply not only to smartphones, but in automotive and watches and then XR. So how do you see, you know, that one technology roadmap helping, you know, us at Qualcomm uh, be uh, relevant, be in a key position to address uh, the metaverse? Yeah, I think that the, um, these perception technologies, these understanding of the user, whether it's tracking your hands or tracking your eyes or tracking your location in the, in the real world, understanding the geometry of the world. So if I'm in a room, uh, what is the, where are the walls and where's, yeah. where's the floor? Um, and then how does the virtual content that may be in that environment interact with it? And does it follow the proper laws of physics yeah. and that sort of thing? These all require computer vision. They require machine learning. Um, they require deep technology expertise that Qualcomm has been working on for decades in mobile. And uh, the investments that we're making in mobile directly apply to yeah. XR. So, you know, we think about camera systems as a sensor input. That's something that, you know, Qualcomm is a world leader in developing today. And so all that expertise, all that know-how and the uh, uh, doing this all at the lowest possible power because, right. you know, these, these devices are mobile devices. We can't connect 
connect them to the PCs and other things because we need to be on the go. That um, that technology expertise that we have from that mobile DNA is something yeah. that's directly applicable. In no, it, so. I, I totally totally um, agree. But I think that's kind of the 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 um, the journey that we are in. And at Qualcomm, we've we've been in a similar journey, enabling the mobile internet. Right? If you remember the early days of phones, where they were, I don't know, 15 years ago versus where we are today. So that's what I think uh, um, you know, uh, we'll see as well in VR and AR and why Qualcomm can be um, in such a, a good place. So can you define Snapdragon Spaces, where we are, what's next? So Snapdragon Spaces is really about taking the technology that we've been developing, these perception tracking technologies that we previously reserved just for OEMs building devices, and now bringing that directly to the developer community. So developers can get our SDKs, whether they're working in real-time 3D in Unity or an Epic Unreal Engine, and they can take these SDKs and get the hardware dev kits and now start building with these technologies like hand tracking or yeah. like positional tracking, um, 3D reconstruction of the environment, so mapping the environment, meshing the environment, and then bringing experiences that can interact with the geometry of the real world, the physical world, in a way that um, blurs the lines between our physical and digital reality. So really, Snapdragon Spaces is about putting these tools in the hands of creators so that they can build the real world metaverse, the, the next generation yeah. of uh, computing. At which stage are we? You know, can developers start putting their hands on it today? We launched the, the, the Spaces platform in, uh, made it generally available on June, June 1st. And, uh, and so now developers can go to our website, spaces.qualcom.com. They can download the Unity or Unreal Engine SDK. They can uh, purchase a dev kit and get started. I really like you know, this, this approach. Usually, you, know, you would see Qualcomm as, you know, we are Snapdragon chips, we're providing chips, providing technology um, to our hardware customer, but now also supporting developers. I believe it needs to be open. More along the lines of the way the internet and the web work today is the is the future. And um, you know, certainly we will have as we're on this um, on this journey together to get to like you described the air glasses that we can wear every day. Along that journey, we're going to take different steps, and we may start with downloading applications and running them on the glasses in a way like we did on the, uh, or during the smartphone evolution. But um, over, over time, I think that thinking about this a little bit more like, like the web where we, um, like the glasses become more like a browser for the real world and the kinds of contents and experiences that we see are contextualized and delivered to us more in, uh, streamed from, from, mm -hmm. the, from the internet using information, perception information that come from the glasses. So there's going to be this tight coupling between the information about the world that the glasses understand and the information about the user, and then also the context of that user and be able to deliver experiences. Of course, for um, the metaverse or metaverse experiences, you will need high bandwidth, super short latencies. But I think one of the, the things that most people don't realize is why you need that. I think we all expect very rich, you know, metaverse experiences on a very small four factor glasses, but how can you uh, generate so much compute processing power in a small form factor? And of course, we're grading to doing that, but there is the physics limits. And then um, one of the things that we're working uh, here at Qualcomm is, uh, you know, what we call distributed processing or distributed compute. Your glasses are probably 25 to 30 grams. Yeah. Um, that's where we want to get ultimately. Um, but in order to get there, we can't be running at uh, five watts, which might be the, 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 the power you know, consumption of, a, of a, let's say, a VR headset today. So how yeah. do we reduce that down to one watt or less than a watt? Um, split computing and being able to distribute the computing workload uh, around on the devices that we have around us in our like kind of physical constellation, as well as leveraging resources in the cloud or at the mobile edge. Yeah. are really important. And so I think today we've, we've, uh, we've done this where we've distributed the compute and workload between the glasses and the smartphones. So that's step one. Step two is now how do we take the smartphone and maybe offload some of that processing 
into the cloud or the mobile edge. And yeah. that's using the wireless WAN. So today, 5G networks and the future 6G networks yeah. and beyond. So, um, so Qualcomm, I think, is through our DNA of being a wireless company, we're, we're really uh, well positioned to be able to understand where that mix of computing should be, how much in the glasses, how yeah. much in the smartphone, and then how much in the cloud, and then orchestrate those workloads between those various devices to deliver the best experience to the developer, let's say. Thanks for watching the Exploring the Metaverse show. If you want to watch another video or learn more about XR, click here. If you want to learn more about Snapdragon Spaces, click here.